Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the conditional operator in C++. So let's go ahead and get started with it. First, we'll go through a little bit of an overview here. And what is the C++ conditional operator? Well, this is a weird type of operator in C++ in that it is a ternary operator, which means that it doesn't have one operand or two operands. It has three operands, which is really, really kind of strange. And so you can see uh, under point one there that what you have is a question mark and a colon. So you actually end up with having three different um, expressions that make it up in three different operands, right? So A, B, and C are your operands, but the operator is made up of this question mark in this uh, colon. Yeah, so like I was saying, it's kind of weird. And what this does is, or, or its function is, is to serve as an alternative to if else. So it's a shorthand type of decision structure uh, that can, you know, maybe make your code look a little bit cleaner or something, right? It's, it's, it's purely optional. It's, it's an alternative that uh, can be easier to use in certain situations than an if else uh, would be. And it has some flexibility in how it can be uh, employed or how you can use it. So, you know, in the programming example I'm about to do, you know, I'll show you a couple of different ways to use it. So it won't take too long because it's just a single operator, but it's, it's weird. And Java, uh, C++ isn't the only programming language that has it. Java has it also, um, C has it. Um, so, you know, you're going to see this thing in, in multiple places. The other languages have a different versions of it. Right? The syntax is different, but it still exists in other languages as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, switch over to Visual Studio and we'll go ahead and do a quick example, okay? Okay, so here we go. We've got, uh, got a Visual Studio open and we're ready to write a simple little program here. So this is a alternative, as I was saying, uh, to if else. So, let me just do an if else, and then I'll show you um, a example of the conditional operator that could replace it. Okay, and which one you use oftentimes is just basically boils down to preference. So you might have something, you know, I'll just make up a simple example, right? You might have something like this where you say um, int x, and you might have a test expression. Okay, and you might say, well, you know, we'll have int y in here too, right? And you might say something like, well, if, if y is greater than zero, then we're going to assign to x1. Uh, otherwise, we're going to assign to x, um, you know, zero, right? You might do something like that. And let's assign something here to... Um, Y and we'll have a little C out statement here just so you can, you know, just so you can see the contents of X, right? So obviously this is going to show us one on the screen because, um, you know, I initialized Y with uh, five and Y is greater than zero. So X, I uh, had one assigned to it, right? So there you go. Now, um, instead of doing that, okay, you could use this conditional operator, this guy right here. And so basically what happens is, is that A, where the A is, that expression there becomes a test expression of some sort. So, so long as it evaluates to true or false, it can be, you know, take whatever form you need it to take. Okay, so maybe it's just Y greater than zero, or maybe, you know, you have this really long convoluted X greater than zero and Y less than two and Z minus, or Z equals four or something like that, right? Um, so as long as that first term evaluates the true or false, you can use it. Okay, so what happens is, is that B becomes your first statement here that gets evaluated. And then the C or the C uh, part here expression takes over for the else part. Okay, so this is essentially your A part. This is your B part. And this is your C part. Okay, so how could we replace this structure? 
um, with the conditional operator. Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm going to uh, tell you. Okay, let me just do it this way so that way everything lines up. Okay, so you can do something like this. You could say, um, you know, x equals, and then you put your test expression in. So you could say something like, um, you know, y greater than zero. There's your a part. Okay, and then you got your question mark. So you can think of this question mark as saying, well, is this true? Is this expression true? If it is, then we're going to evaluate um, b, right? Otherwise, we're going to evaluate c. So just like with the if else, is this true? If so, then we're going to do b. Otherwise, we're going to do um, c, right? So if a is true, do b. Otherwise, do c. So here, if a is true, do b, right? So we'll, we can say 1, um, otherwise 0. So what this is doing is, is if y is greater than 0, then this 1, so it's as if this entire part here was replaced by that 1. So the 1 will get assigned to x. Otherwise, the 0 will get assigned to x. All right, so let's go ahead and um, build it. So you can see there's your 1. So it's nice in the fact that you know, you've got this more compact version of a decision structure. Okay, and just to show you that it works if you know it's false, you know, if I change y to negative one, then you're gonna see you know zero on the screen because we assigned um, to x the, the zero, right? Because in that case y is not y greater than zero is false, right? It's not true. So we can also do something like this. We'll leave the y in there, and then we could say x equals one or x equals uh, zero, right? So it's, there's a lot of flexibility in how you can actually build this thing, right? So there you go. Okay, so that's you know another way you could use it. Um, another thing you could do would be something like, um, you could do something like this. You could say, well, if um, you could nest it into other statements, okay? So you could do something like, um, Oh, I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Maybe depending on some variable, some test, you want to say hi, Hank, or you want to say bye, Hank, right? So we could um, make that decision as part of another statement. We could embed it in another statement. You could, so you could say something like, well, if y is greater than zero, then... Um, we'll go ahead and say, you know, hello, right? Um, otherwise, we'll say um, goodbye. You know, something like that. Okay, and let's put, uh, let's put some spaces in here. And let's encase this entire thing um, in parentheses. So that way, you know, this whole thing gets evaluated first. All right, we want to have this this inside of the parentheses to make sure that we override the order of operations here and encapsulate the entire decision structure. But now what we have is something, again, more compact. So since y is negative 1, the a part, the first expression, the test expression, is going to evaluate to false, right? So it's going to be goodbye that gets sent to... Um, that gets sent to see out right not hello okay so if we had actually when i think about it i don't want a space in there so let's get rid of it so let's say that we make y positive then right so now this first part's going to evaluate the true so it's going to be hello that gets evaluated to or gets returned and then that gets sent to see out followed by the hank right so this part gets evaluated first and then this part and you know, it's, if this is true, then this is what comes out of it. Otherwise, it's what this is what comes out of it, okay? So now you're going to see that it says, hello, Hank, because, um, you know, x had 99 and 99 is greater than 0. So, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways that you can use this thing. It has a lot of flexibility. It enables you to write um, more compact code. And, 
you know, it's just another tool. It's just another tool for your toolbox where it might, you know, maybe make your code a little cleaner and make it a little bit easier to read, you know, whatever. So if you like it, you use it. If you don't, you don't. If it solves your problem, great. If it doesn't solve your problem, then don't use it. It's a purely optional construct. Um, you can always use if else, but here, instead of having four plus lines, I got one, right? Um, you know, because uh, without this structure, you know, I might have to do something like, well, if X is greater than zero, or if Y is greater than zero, set to a variable, um, J, hello, uh, L set to J, um, goodbye, right? And then I'd have to send J uh, to C out, okay? And then that would require me to have another variable, string variable that I'd have to define. So, I mean, it's, it's a tool and it has its uses just like anything else in the language, all right? So that's everything I got for you in this video. We'll see you next time.